Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, again to A Random Moment uh, with Pastor David Unfiltered. Pastor, this last Sunday, you gave a study on, uh, from Mark 13, and Jesus was asked questions what, regarding the temple. And, uh, and pretty much what he told the disciples that the stones that you see, these beautiful stones on the temple, uh, there's not going to be one that's standing on another. And so later on, they pull them, when they get to the Mount of Olives, they pull them aside. And uh, when, when will this happen and what will the sign be? And you uh, went through and taught, uh, pretty, it was a great study. If you guys haven't seen it, I would recommend you going back and watching that study. But one of the things that he mentioned, and which, uh, uh, which is a, uh, the direction that you're taking the study, which I found very interesting, is that when, when he was mentioning, when Jesus was mentioning there'll be ru uh, wars and rumors of wars, you know, we have the war in Ukraine that recently kicked off. And then, uh, I don't know, a few months ago, there was a blood, the blood moon, and people were like, oh, it's the end of the times. Well, if they read their Bible, they would see it's actually in the tribulation in Revelation chapter 6 with, uh, with the sixth seal being broken. Uh, so I wanted to get your, your feedback on, or the way you taught on Sunday, because there's been different studies that have, that have taught on this particular on the end days. Uh, the way you led the study was very interesting. Can you share a little bit about how you drew that out and, and the importance of being in God's Word to understand these things? Well, here's the thing that I, as I look at last days, and again, I'm no expert on last days by any means. As a matter of fact, I don't consider myself to be expert on pretty much anything. But I do have um, certain uh, awareness of scriptures and things that relate to uh, those signs of the times. And so, as we've looked at Mark 13, um, you know, yeah, Jesus is there in the temple precincts. He's leaving the uh, temple area there. And he's going to cross this brook that you've gone to many times. We've gone to the brook Kedron, going up into the uh, Mount of Olives area. and. So he's seated there on the Mount of Olives and he's overlooking the temple and he begins to respond to the question, um, when, when shall these things be and what will be the sign of your coming? And, and uh, over the 2,000 year history of the church from that point, we'll say to where we're at now, um, there have been many who have speculated so many various things concerning that and so what I wanted to do on Sunday was to remind our people and those who uh, had opportunity to listen to the study, I wanted to remind the people that the question was not the signs, plural. The question is asked in the singular, what is the sign? And, uh, and Matthew gives us more than Mark. Mark kind of gives us a, a synopsis. Matthew expands a bit uh, beyond that in the initial question and all. But... The question is related to the sign prior to his coming. Now, in its context, uh, Jesus is speaking of the tribulation, um, you know, and the things that he speaks of are the wars, the rumors of wars, pestilences, and various other things are, are part of what you can see in the book of Revelation, chapter 6 through 19. And so you can see these things as they, um, they, uh, they progress during that period of time the seven-year period of the tribulation. But these are also things that you can see taking place and that are growing incrementally uh, more and more until that, that, that final purging, that final seven years of wrath actually uh, descends upon the earth and the wrath of the Lamb uh, comes upon um, the unbelieving people of that age. So there are things that we see that are taking place. And so from that particular vantage point I wanted to share with us with our church and those who might listen that the question was the sign it was singular and so what is the sign he repeats it in verses 21 through 23 of chapter 13 and it's be careful that you're not deceived and he actually begins with that what is the sign he said uh, take heed that you are not deceived so what is the primary sign that we are in that period that is leading to the return of Jesus Christ. And what is escalating over time to be fulfilled during the tribulation? Well, we know that during the tribulation, there are many false teachers 
There, we also know that there is a false prophet and that the false prophet there goes before the Antichrist and, and he causes people both great and small to, uh, to worship the beast and all. We know all of these things take place that he through lying signs and wonders and all will draw people away from the truth of Christ. And, um, you know, Paul makes that clear in his letters to the Thessalonians and Revelation especially gives us insight. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to let the body know that, that we even in this day are susceptible to deception, that from the beginning of the history of the church, all the way back to the book of Acts when Simon the sorcerer uh, was first trying to buy the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then you have others that uh, begin to stand up and oppose the gospel. And, and I was mentioning that almost every New Testament book outside of the gospels, but even including the gospels, almost every New Testament book, except for Galatians and I believe 2nd and 3rd John, mention the deception and speak of the last days in that way and the return of Jesus Christ and so I wanted our church to know that that uh, even as Jesus had prophesied, which of course he's telling us what's going to happen, that our church, that we as believers and those who have uh, uh, an ear to hear, that we need to be in the word of God. We need to be reading it individually. We need to be praying through. Uh, we need to go to, uh, to receive Bible study from anointed teachers of God's word and be aware of the fact that even today many have arisen who are false teachers. There are so many that I have seen on TV. As a matter of fact, I'm very careful with anything I watch, John, because there are just quite a number of false teachers. And, and some of them, if I began to mention names, some of them have been teaching for quite some time and they've been taking money from people. They, they receive offerings for phony miracles and, and cloths that they send or prayer mats or seed that you plant or you know whatever and they're making merchandise off of the souls of people they're false teachers and many of the people are not are not taught the word i, I can i have seen well-known churches that you would never think were teaching that were teaching error but i have seen that where the pastor has become more of a celebrity than than a bible teacher and before you know it he's just giving his own experience and his own opinions and he's and he's he's coloring the scriptures by 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 him by his view and i see that you have to be careful with that and so um false teachers have been around in the new testament um from the beginning of course there were false teachers in the in the past false prophets peter says is even as there were false prophets among the people there shall be false teachers among you you know you see warnings in Paul's writings and John's writings, Apostle Peter's writings. You see warnings in the book of Jude. You see a, a full-on warning in Revelation. And yet there are many people who are trusting that person with their souls. And uh, I, I'm not saying that people shouldn't uh, have uh, faith that uh, that their pastors are, are, are doing their best to teach them the truth. I think that you need to have an element of faith in that. I, I exercise discernment with my own pastor. I love my pastor very much with all of my heart. At the same time, I, I remained open to reading and to checking whether these things are so, and to, to learn and to, when, when questioned, to ask the question. You know, if, I, if a question came up, I, I would ask the question, how come it says this and what do you see about that? And in the end, that's why Jesus said, take heed, it's a personal thing. And so uh, as we've been going through Mark, and we'll continue as we uh, enter into a second portion of that study this upcoming uh, Sunday, yeah, be aware. There are so many who are up there who are they're, they're fleecing the flock of God, John. They're, they're making a lot of money. I could tell you stories, but they're, they're making a lot of money from these poor, innocent people who trust them, and they send them their... They're, they're widow's mites, and, and um, I don't know. It just it breaks my heart. Uh, one last thing, and, and I'll finish this tirade. But um, when I first got saved, John, um, as, a, as a young man, 20 years old, who never really received proper instruction in the Word, I valued what truth was. I really did. I wanted to know truth because... 
I had been told truth makes you free. It sets you free. So for all of these years, I have I have been that one who who will check on and see and validate and prove these things, see whether they're true or not. And then I don't want to give to my sheep whom the Lord has entrusted into my care anything but the the, the closest scrutiny that I can give to the scriptures and, and pray that the Lord helps me to, to speak the truth honestly to them. And I think every pastor should be able to say that, John, but I'm sad to say not every pastor does. Because the more celebrity he becomes, the more well-known he becomes, the more he is, he is tempted to fall into the trap of the wicked one who um, will puff him up as if he is uh, someone that cannot be corrected. And I have seen that. I've seen young pastors who had so much zeal and love for Christ, they really did, who became popular because of their personalities and their, their vision and, and really expressions of faith to the point that they they lost themselves and they stopped being what they once were. And um, I've asked the Lord to help me, and he has been faithful to, I'll be honest with you, sometimes in the most humbling ways, but to help me to to, to always look to him. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor. That's good insight because, uh, as you're mentioning, for us to be in the Word of God so we're not deceived, so we're able to pass on the truth as you have been with so faithfully to our, our, our church and so we're so thankful for that uh, another thing pastor I want to invite the church family to come out on Wednesdays because you're continuing the series on yeah. spiritual warfare and this mm -hmm. kind of ties hand in hand it together does, yes. uh, the, the deception and how to guard and how to fight against yes. it yes. by staying in the word and tomorrow you we looked at the belt of truth last week and so we'll be looking you'll be teaching us more from the weapons that yeah the breastplate of righteousness tomorrow and uh, it's going to be it's it's well obviously the bible is a great book to look at and i think that it'll be an instructive study it's amazing how these studies are lining up on Sunday yeah. and on Wednesday yeah. uh, because we are getting towards that end. Amen. And so, well, thank you, Pastor David and church thank family. You. Thank you for tuning in. Do want to invite you to come on out tomorrow night, Wednesday evening, for our 7 p.m. service. We'll be involved in worship. And then Pastor David will be teaching us on the breastplate of righteousness. Look forward to coming out. Invite a friend. Invite your friends and family. And then for those who are watching online, come join us. It's good to be great for you to be a part of our in the service there and worshiping together. Amen. So, Pastor, again, thank you. Thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.